going to talk about the fact that Netflix used artificial intelligence to keep you chill or chilling. They they want you to keep they want you to Netflix and chill. You get the point. Anyways, we have a multi-arm bandit framework. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to kind of explain it in a picture. And why is that better? And why are they using AI to recommend me movies? Well, it's going to help them make money. Well, let's talk about how it helps them make money. About how the fact that this guy, which is an octopus, let's say he goes into a casino or you go into a casino, right? There's a bunch of slot machines lined up. You want to know which one pays you the most money, right? Let's say typically this guy pays you the most and this guy pays you the most. And let's say you're going to try those guys 90% of the time. And then eventually what will happen is every once in a while you might be like, you know what, maybe I should try it to pull this guy. But I don't want to pull it too much because these are the guys that are paying me the big bucks right here. So maybe just 10% of the time, I'm going to pull on those guys. That's really what our bandit's going to do. And that's how Netflix is going to recommend movies to you. They're going to give you what is like they're going to give you a rank ordering of movies that they know you'll like and every once in a while they're going to dish in some new movies to explore. It's called exploring versus exploiting. So they're going to explore 90 or they're going to exploit 90% of the time, explore 10% of the time and we're going to run through the code super quick and I'll show you how they do it with a baseline data frame. So here we go. I'm pulling this data from the IMDb uh, movie set data frame. Here's what our data frame looks like. You're going to end up with a timestamp, a movie ID, and a user ID. Think of the user ID as you. You're rating some movie. You have some movie ID, right? I don't know, the Titanic maybe, or Barbie. That would be, be my daughter's review. And then a timestamp, right, like chronologically. And so I'm going to walk through a data frame. And as I walk through the data frame, I want to know if you liked or disliked it. And every once in a while, I'm going to start recommending movies that I think you might like and if you do I'm gonna update that arm so I'm gonna say that arm that movie aka that arm right like that guy up there was pulling at the casino is more likely to be useful and for me to recommend to you the liked column right here this one or zero is defined as a 4.5 right here in the code you can see this is our beautiful Python code so greater than 4.5 is liked less than 4.5 it, it isn't liked, right pretty self-explanatory Let's keep it moving. So how does Netflix decide that it's actually useful in production, right? Like they want to know like Kevin might watch Sons of Anarchy. I don't know if that's even on Netflix, right? He might watch it. He might like it, but we don't really know. Like we need a way to evaluate that it's actually useful, right? So that's what Replay is going to do right here. And this actually came from Netflix. You can see it says Lee et al. 2010. What we're going to do with this guy is we're going to see a user one, a user four, and a user six that is where they randomly actually checked out these movies in the past life and the model that we're gonna build hypothetically assigned. So you can see that this user randomly watched RV, the model randomly assigned RV, and they didn't like it, right? So this guy would get a zero, both liked Breaking Bad, right? Watched it, they recommended it, they both liked it. Anyways, you get the point, right? You get a one, you get a one. These guys right here though, right? Like if you look back into reality, let's say I'm user two, for example, right? There's no way that me watching Breaking Bad will have any bearing on my review for RV, right? It wouldn't make any sense. Like how would me watching Breaking Bad have anything to do with my movie review of RV? So these are the guys that we're going to throw out and that's how we're going to not evaluate our data set. So basically just one, four, and six type of movies that line up in both you watched and the model recommended. That's how we're going to score the algorithm. Here, the best part is we're just going to translate in this into code, right? Like we're basically going to walk through our data frame, right? And then we're going to check to see if it's in a recommended movie, right? Like was the user who watched it in the past, right? This guy, right? Model assignment, that's you, user. Random assignment, sorry, user. And then model assignment, do they match? Oh, yes, they do right here. Okay, cool. I'm just going to append it to my current data frame. I'm just going to pull out if the movie was liked or not. For loop is right here. First, we're going to run a random policy to show you like, hey, randomly assigning movies to people isn't worth it. And then a multi-arm bandit actually is. So if we come down here into running the algorithm, right, you can see that I have the replay score um, right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly choose an arm right here each time through the model, right? Like I'm saying, remember, this is me showing you that random assignment isn't that good. I'm going to randomly pull an arm. I'm going to get a score back. And then eventually, after I run through that entire data set, I'm going to see how my score is. Basically, I get 54,000 reward points with some rolling average, like a 50 mean rolling average of like 42. Okay, that's our baseline, right? Like, okay, what happens if I just randomly assign you movies? That's fine. Now, let's check out what happens if I do the multi-arm bandit, which is the whole point of this video. How is Netflix actually going to make more money? So what I'm going to do is call run an epsilon greedy policy, which is what I showed you above in that picture form. 
what it's doing is every once in a while I want to explore some arm, right? And then every and then the other times I want to exploit. So I'm going to randomly pull and notice I, I labeled my epsilon, which is 10% of the time, right? That 0 0.10, right? 10% of the time. So 10% of the time, check out a new arm, right? Like maybe there's some new movie out there that I might really like, but 90% of the time, show me Adam Sandler movies. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to like it. I'm going to keep coming back to Netflix and Netflix's stock is going to keep going through the roof, right? Like that's that's what we're here for. So if I keep rolling down, I'm going to do the same exact thing, but the only difference is now this epsilon greedy policy right here is going to replace the random policy, right? Makes sense. 90, 10 split, you get what I'm saying, but the algorithm is going to find out how often I should offer the movie and how often I should start keep pulling the exploited arms. And if you see, eventually the best part is the fact that, look, if we look at the total rewards, right? Same reward metric, same code that's written before. I got 140,000 points. Remember the other, the other previous random policy was 54,000 points, right? So I more than doubled, I almost tripled my output using a multi-arm bandit. So that's pretty much how Netflix makes their money. And if you check out the finalizing graphs, just to put it to rest, you can see that Epsilon random policy, boom. You can see that the Epsilon policy dominates overall, right? Like you just significantly higher score. You can see right here with these little jagged edges right here, that's where it's doing some exploration, right? So like we're willing to like lose a movie or two right to see if you guys me whoever likes them but ultimately over the long term the bandit will really start to learn what is doing best and that's pretty much how netflix makes their money keeps you chilling and keeps the recommendations rolling anyways guys please like rate subscribe and have a great day thanks bye